use the podcast for business development. So the guests that you have coming on are potential referral partners for you so that if they know you, like you, trust you, they will send business to you. And if you brought on 10 guests and you get one, two, three people out of the 10 actually send you clients afterwards because they love you and what you can provide, most people bring on their competitors or people in their industry, which is a fun conversation that leads to zero business. And so that little shift is how you can take a brand new podcast like Mina's creating here and start actually making some real money off of it. And the focus becomes selling your thing for $500 to $2,500 packages instead of trying to sell her book or affiliate marketing or these things that will be little dollars instead of the big dollars. The thing with affiliate marketing is you need to have real volume to make it work. The commission rate is usually pretty low and the volume off of first sale is usually pretty low. The problem with affiliate marketing is you need, you need lots of scale to make it work. Like everybody's trying to go through the front door and so that has the most resistance. It's the hardest to get through. So you climb through a window and you find another way. Our conversations in Paris give me ideas about how to grow my, with my podcast. I was uh, contacted with two companies. One, it's about supplements to promote their product on my podcast. And the other, it's uh, active wear for sports. Okay. The problem is when it's mentioned that I'm in France, my, I can't apply. Well, okay. So listen, so for people watching, you know, the strategy was if you're going to host a podcast, bring on people that can be business development for you so that it's not just other coaches or other people in your industry. It's people who could potentially refer you clients. And Mina went on an amazing health journey. How much weight did you lose? Seven kilograms. Seven kilograms. I don't know what that is in pounds. I think pounds, but yeah. But she went back mm -hmm. to you went back to your university weight and then you've kept it off like this all all you know yes. since then. Yes, more than uh, 15 years now. Yeah. I keep the same body shape, yeah. And so she teaches other people how they can do it as well. And the idea with the podcast was, okay, what are some of the companies that if they knew who you were, would potentially introduce you to clients? So uh, first off, great. Like, congrats on, on reaching out to two companies and starting to make some, some progress and traction there. Uh, the two things I would look at is, one, more you know, more, if you only have two companies, then it's really like, oh my gosh, I have to make this work. Versus if you had a hundred that you're reaching out to, now it's not as, it doesn't, it doesn't matter as much. Like if one company is slow or one company says no, or one company, you know, doesn't respond or whatever. Right. Um, so I think we do this a lot because we put so much pressure on like this one thing having to work. And then if it doesn't, it all falls apart where we just need just more volume. So two is great. Two is better than zero. And now we need, you know, 98 more to go reach out to and see whether it might be a fit. Uh, and then two, when, when, uh, when the front door is closed and the back door is closed, you go through the window, you know? So if, they're, if they're, their process is you fill out this form, oh, you're from France, you can't apply. Okay, that, that's the front door. So mm. what's the window? You know, it might just be, I don't know how big the company is but it might be finding who the CEO is and messaging her on Instagram or on Twitter. Or if it's yeah. a really big company, maybe it's the, the VP of marketing or somebody in marketing and messaging her on Instagram or on Twitter, right? So it's like, okay, we have this path and it's often not usually the path that, uh, like everybody's trying to go through the front door. And so that has the most resistance. It's the hardest to get through. Mm -hmm. So you climb through a window and you find another way through to make it work. So that company that you like, both of them could be fits. And if they're saying no, or they're not, you know, they have a web form and because you're in France, they're saying, you know, you can't apply. Cool. You reach out and find another way and say, Hey, I'd love to have you as a guest on my podcast and share your story. That's a good idea. Yeah. Even, even in that, like even the whole idea of, of having a show, to do business development is already going through the window instead of through the front door, because whether it's the active wear company or was a supplement company that you're talking to, uh, they get hit up all the time with people trying to make deals, trying to do partnerships. Uh, so you're one of many people trying to reach out. 
but they don't get connected with enough with people who want to share their story. They don't get yeah. a lot of interview requests. So that becomes a path you're going through as media now, instead of just the usual path as a partner. And it's easier to get a yes to come on your show and tell their story. Yes. So uh, the good news uh, is that I created my YouTube channel. Let's go, Mina. This is great. Yes. <laughs> it's not um, active yet, but it will be uh, soon. So uh, it will be uh, on the same topic. And the interviews I did for the podcast, I will meet them on my YouTube channel. Okay, great. I'm thinking about affiliate marketing to inter introduce in uh, in the description of uh, videos. So you can. The thing with affiliate marketing is you need to have real volume to make it work. Mm -hmm. If you look at coaching, for example, like how much is your, you have a bunch of programs, but what are the price ranges for your programs to work with you? The first... Uh, Offer, it will be $497. Okay. And so it starts at, four, starts at $497. Yeah. And, and what's the highest offer that you have? What's the price? $497. Okay. So every person who comes in uh, that you're going to start working with is either basically $500 or $2,500. That's good. Like that's some, that's some good money for people coming in. If you go to affiliate marketing... If you look at, you know, let's take activewear and let's take supplements, which are the two companies that you're talking to. And you can go to, you can go to books, it can go to other things as well too. But the commission rate is usually pretty low and the volume off of first sale is usually pretty low. And so mm -hmm. you might make, the problem with affiliate marketing is you need, you need lots of scale to make it work. So, you know, let's say, even in a generous case, like if one in a hundred people that's very generous, right. Would like click and buy something from it, from your YouTube video. So you, you have, you know, one person and how much are you going to make five bucks off of a, off of a commission, $10 off of a commission. Like it's, it's not a lot of money off of each one compared to if somebody signs up for your program and now you're making $500 or, or $2,500. So it's not, it's not bad to have. It could add a little bit of a bonus, I guess, if you're putting it in the description below. But most people don't read the description unless you call it out in the video. Like if you made a video about the supplement or the active wear or something, then you'll have a much higher percentage of people clicking through. Otherwise, people don't really look at the description. Mm. Um, so there's nothing wrong with doing it. It's just probably not going to make you that much money. And if you had a choice between where you spend your energy, you want to spend it on the things that will have the highest return. Cool. Now, if you had a million people watching your videos, then affiliate marketing makes a whole lot more sense, right? Because uh, those $10 and $5 start to really add up. But at the beginning, when you have, you know, you just started a channel, you have no videos yet, but it's coming. The, the best thing to sell is you. So it's your, your, your training, your coaching, your $500 or $2,500 packages. That's where most of the effort should be. A lot of work to do. <laughs> well, it, here's the thing. Yeah. Is like it's, it's also trying to make it easier so it's not as much work, right? So the whole idea of affiliate marketing makes more work for you. Because now you got to find the companies, you got to find the links, you got to update the description, you got to sign their agreements. Like it's, mm -hmm. it's work to do all the affiliate marketing stuff with at the beginning, very little results. So I wouldn't even worry about it. So if, like, if you're, if you're overwhelmed by work and lots of things to do. No, not really because I'm consistent uh, on doing it. The only thing that I'm not consistent in is uh, showing up and market my podcast. And this is my big challenge is to show up uh, on Facebook, on Instagram, on TikTok. Uh, but I'm planning to show up a uh, minimum uh, twice a week so as to start to go there and uh, to yeah. talk about my podcast. So that'll be a better use of your time because if, yeah. if the goal of the podcast is 
you're going to bring on people who, if they knew who you were, leads to business for you. So you're going to bring on a supplement company entrepreneur or a fashion wear or, or sportswear entrepreneur or whoever else that relates to your industry. If, if the supplement company entrepreneur loves you and loves your story and you love their products, they don't sell coaching. They sell supplements. No. So could they sell coaching? Could they refer you to some of their clients? Could you work it out that, sure, somebody's buying supplements, but maybe they're not consistently buying supplements because they don't have a program that they're on. They, they need mm -hmm. someone like you to come in and give them a program and help them figure out even what supplements to be on and for how long. So if the goal of having a podcast is to bring on people like that, who then, if you had 10 people on, one, two, three of them start referring you to their clients. And in every client you bring on, that's $500 each or $2,500 each or somewhere in there, right? So if, if, you interview, if you interview 10 people who are all potential ideal fits for you and three of them refer people on to you or send an email out talking about you, uh, and then out of that, you get 40 people who sign up for your program, you know, that's a lot more than you'd make off of affiliate marketing, right? So it's uh, spending the effort on getting, booking the people. So doing the outreach. So you've done two. Amazing. That's a great start. Now it's mm -hmm. like, how do we get it to 100? And then extra time would be working on promoting the podcast, making content, doing clips for Instagram and YouTube shorts, et cetera. Um, that's where I put extra effort in because the bigger the podcast gets the easier it's going to be to get people on your show to say yes yeah and uh, last such a day i participated in a um, summit health summit and it was organized by different coaches and i was invited to talk about uh, <clears throat> my story and it was interesting because uh, we decided to do challenges uh, from time to time and to talk. And each one market all the other uh, coaches. So it's a manner to talk about my podcast as well. Yeah, the thing with those challenges is seeing that does it lead anywhere? You know, so you did one. One is just a great experience because the more you get a chance to talk about your story, the better. And, and you'll get better at it. Every time you tell the story, you get better and you get better and you get better and you get better. Right. Um, being a part of a summit is great because there's, there's, there's a live audience and there's also a replay audience. Um, the model is usually let's have all of the people come on, then email their lists and everybody brings a few people or however many people and create the summit. It really just depends on who's in there and how big their lists are to see how many people actually show up. Um, but in that, that model can work one, just to get the experience. And then two, you're thinking, does this, is it helping me get business? So at the beginning, it might even not matter if you get business or not from it, because you're telling your story, you're practicing in front of a, a new audience um, building the relationship with the other coaches may not be as valuable because they're they're selling the same thing as you. Maybe not the exact uh, same thing, but close. Not exactly the same thing. For example, uh, one is um, keto diet. Another one is essential oil, for example, specialized in essential oil. And each one uh, has her business. So it's different from uh, my approach. Right. So, but your approach is very nutrition heavy, right? It's a holistic uh, program, a holistic approach. Um, nutrition, fitness, and uh, mind, body, heart, soul. Everybody has their own modality, and that's great. If somebody's going to hire somebody, right? If you think about somebody coming to the summit who's trying to learn, and they're going to then work with somebody, would they work with both you and the keto person at the same time? I don't like maybe, but probably not. But would they work with you and the essential oils person at the same time? Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. But, but that's, a, that's the kind of thing of like, okay, they're, they're not, they're not direct competitors. And I don't really see like competition like that, but it's more, if somebody's coming on, it's like who you can develop a business relationship with. 
you want, like, would the keto person ever refer business to you? I don't think so. Probably not, right? No. So, <laughs> so, so nurturing that relationship is probably not strategically a good decision. If you just love that person and you share entrepreneurial advice and it's great being around other people, it's a different benefit. It's more of like you have a connection circle and people to bounce ideas off of. Cool. But it's not, uh, it's not going to generate business for you because you're, you're too close, even though your thing is more holistic and keto might be part of it. I'm not part of it, but like the keto woman is not going to refer business to you probably. So the essential oils person, maybe like that's a, probably a closer fit because you might talk a little bit about essential oils, but it's only like a little piece of the whole thing because fitness and nutrition is going to be a lot bigger piece. Same thing with anybody who's coming on and doing a fitness program. Would they ever refer clients to you? Probably not, so. no. right? Like tiny percentage. So again, if you just love that person and you want to, you want to make, you, the relationship is something else. It's just because you love that entrepreneur and you love hanging out with them. Cool. But it's not going to lead to business for you. So that's what in thinking mm -hmm. of the summits, just to tell your story and just to practice and just getting your message out there, that's a win, especially right now when you're at the start of sharing all this stuff. So that's great. That's mm -hmm. amazing. Ongoing, though, you, you need to start asking yourself, one, did I get business from this event? And two, do the to the people here who are also speaking, is there a connection for me that can help me grow my business? And if too many people are like you and they won't give you business and you probably wouldn't pass them on, like you're probably not giving business to the keto person unless somebody says, Mina, like I only want to do keto and I don't want the holistic thing. Then you might say, okay, well, here's go to this person because I can't help you. But you're probably not referring too many people to the keto person either. Where something like, the supplement company or something like the athletic wear company or, or products around it, they, they're not in coaching at all. No. And you're not in, you're not launching your own line of supplements yet. Yeah. <laughs> right. You're not building your own <laughs> Nike, you know, yet. Right. Which is great. So like those are much better ideal partnerships for you because they can refer clients off to you. So that's just how I would evaluate like there's the telling your story and just getting it out there into practice, which is great. But then are you getting business from this? And are the people who are there uh, potential referral partners for you or not? You make it really clear for me because uh, <laughs> I was thinking about all these things. And uh, of course, it's uh, the first time and I don't uh, know which uh, direction for now. But uh, discussing with you, it you make it uh, really clear and uh, digest for me <laughs> cool I, well, i'm glad to help that's that's uh that's why we do these things that's why we have movement makers too and listen i think yeah. at the beginning it's good to say yes to things just to just to experiment and to test and to try and to see and we actually did I, i've been a part of a lot of those different summits um most recently i've said no to i think all of them um but we, the, the one we had, we had one where we had a pretty good relationship and we were actually talking about movement makers in there. And they even actually helped promote movement makers a lot. We brought in new members through there. But then the follow up and the accounting and the, it was actually more of a headache for my team. Me, I don't care. I just show up and I talk and help people. But then Nina, my wife, who helps like run the company and then my mm -hmm. team. Yeah, it's like it was too complicated to work with them. It created too much hassle and too many problems to work with them. So we stopped doing that relationship. Um, I love them. I mean, it was super fun to do it, but I'm not the only one that matters. You know, if I'm making a lot more work for my team, then it doesn't work. So those are just some of the things that you, you do and you don't know until you get into it and you try. So like, it's great. Like you, you try a new food, you know, you taste it, you see if you like it. And if you do, you can go eat some more. And if you don't, then you stop. So the summits mm -hmm. and that model is a great thing to test, to taste and try. And you're doing it. If you're going to keep do like, if this is going to be every month, you're going to do it now. Okay. Now it has to, it has to start to pay off. It's got to be worth it for you somehow for your business.
Yes, it was a, a good exercise to talk without slide, without anything to practice my English first and uh, telling my story. It was a good exercise, but uh, of course now I have uh, the vision about uh, how to grow. So you make it very really clear for me if I uh, should continue doing this. Maybe for practice, okay, but not thinking business uh, 100%. Yeah, and, and just see, you know, the, at some point, the practice will, will become less and less valuable. Yes, when we talk right? about. Like, like today, the, you did one, which is great. There's like learning curve. You learned a lot. You do another one and you learn. You still learn, but not as much. Another one, you learn a little bit. And then by the time you're doing your fourth or fifth one, it, it might be just you're not getting much value anymore from the learning. So then is it leading to business growth for you or not? Um, one thing I would do is you have a list of all the speakers, right? Who are there? Yeah. This could be a great hack to get more business is you look at that list and you see who might be a potential partner for you. And then you reach out to them and you say, Hey, I'm Mina. We both spoke at whatever summit. Uh, I, you know, I was on three hours after you, so we didn't get to connect there, but I, I think I'd love to learn more about your business and have you as a guest on my podcast. If you think it's a potential referral partner. Uh, the essential oil, uh, girl contacted me. Yes. Okay. Uh, during the summit, she sent me a message on messenger telling me, uh, that we can connect after the summit. Okay, great. So, so, I mean, that's good on her, like good job for her to reach out to you. Now it's on you. Are, is there anybody else there who might be a potential partner for you? And then you reach out to them, even if you didn't talk to them at the event. Mm -hmm. So you look at the list of who the speakers are going to be, whether it's this event, whether it's a future event, whether it's a conference or a trade show, you look at who the list is of the people and then who might be a potential partner for you. So you say, okay, essential oils. Yes. Keto. No, you know, fitness, no uh, apparel. Yes. And whoever else is on the list. And then you can send a message to them to say, Hey, we, we, I saw you speaking. I was a speaker there too. I'd love to have you as a guest on my show. Even if you never met them, even if you never connected mm -hmm. at the summit, you have a point of connection, which is you are both speakers at this event. And there might be one other speaker there besides the essential oils person who could be a good fit for your show that then leads to business for you as well. Like if there was an apparel company or another supplement company or somebody else who was speaking there, you can always reach out even if you didn't connect at the event to have them on your show, build the relationship and hopefully get some referrals. A good idea. Thank yeah. you. And so you can do that for the last one, but then also in the future for any, any ones that are coming up, they usually show their list of, of speakers. Um, so it's an easy way to make a, a great connection as opposed to like just a cold Instagram where they don't know who you are yet. Yeah. Uh, I, I forget, but I have, uh, I was reached by an, um, a platform asking me to put my podcast on their platform. I did it, but I don't uh, have any idea about uh, uh, the outcome of, of it. And also another app, it was Wisdom app, I think. They asked me to, to make my, my, my podcast on their platform as well. Okay. I didn't do it yet. So here's how that could be helpful. For the most part, most platforms, you're probably not going to get a lot of views or, 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 down, or playbacks on any of these platforms. So you're not doing it because you're going to get a million people who are now going to listen to your podcast because you put it on this network, right? But yeah. what you can do is at the beginning, when you're trying to build up your presence and you're trying to attract people to come on your show, you can use the fact that you're on these various platforms as part of the information about the show. So you can say, uh, hey, I, I, you know, CEO of some supplement company, I love your story. I'd love to have you come on and talk about it on my new podcast. And the podcast gets distributed on 
platform, 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 right? And so it makes it look, you're using their name to make you look bigger than, than it is to get a yes, <laughs> right? So if it's just to try to gain attention and not, it's probably not worth it because you got to figure out their platform. You got to post there. You got to sign agreement. Like it's just a waste of time in terms of just getting attention for your show. You're, for the audience, you want to be on YouTube and then clips for Instagram, TikTok. That's how you're going to get an audience. Mm -hmm. But if somebody went to your YouTube channel, it's like, oh, there's nothing there yet. So you can say it'll be on YouTube, but it's also we have agreements, which you, you have to sign an agreement to get it onto whatever podcast network, right? So you have an agreement with Upworthy and whatever, like five other platforms, like it's going to go to all these places, your show with me. So it's easier to get a yes from them to want to join. That's why I would look at it as instead of just trying to get uh, attention and audience. Um, at the beginning of my career, I did it for media, right? So I went after a lot of media outlets. We went after New York Times. We went after Wall Street Journal. We went after different media outlets. Not because, like, I got into New York Times. I got into Wall Street Journal. It did zero for my business, right? It's like we got mentioned in New York Times. It's not that like my business started blowing up and now everybody cared about me. Like it did, it did nothing to grow my business apart from the fact that I can say I've been in the New York times and I've been in the wall street journal. Mm -hmm. It just adds more credibility. Mm -hmm. Right. So being a part of these other networks, you can say I'm part of upworthy or whatever, and they have a reach of whatever. And I'm part of this network and they have a reach. So it just makes it look bigger than it is. Uh, and just gives you a little more credibility coming in compared to if you didn't have anything else. That's how I would approach those things. I'm new uh, in podcasting, so I'm learning. I'm learning by doing. <laughs> and, That's great. Uh, I think that there are a lot of things to know, uh, to learn from uh, doing. Mm. Yeah, and you're off to a great start. And again, for anybody listening, watching, like use the podcast for business development. So the guests that you have coming on are potential referral partners for you so that they know you, like you, trust you, they will send business to you. And if you brought on 10 guests and you get one, two, three people out of the 10 actually send you clients afterwards because they love you and what you can provide, most people bring on their competitors or people in their industry which is a fun conversation that leads to zero business. And so that little shift is how you can take a brand new podcast like Mina's creating here and start actually making some real money off of it. And the focus becomes selling your thing for $500 to $2,500 packages instead of trying to sell her book or affiliate marketing or these things that will be, will be little dollars instead of the big dollars. <laughs> Let's go, Mina! <laughs> Super exciting. Yes. <laughs> I closed my business. Okay. So this is what happened. A year into my first business, it wasn't working out. So what I did was I sold, I sold that one. And with the money that I made from that one, I started another one. And it was doing good. Um, it was a boutique, a quinceanera and bridal boutique. I was doing really good. And then COVID happened. Mm -hmm. So I had a closing. I closed it a month ago. Well, a month and a half ago. I closed it and I sold the, the stuff that I had in there. Like, because um, I didn't own the business, you know, just the building itself. I didn't own that. I just owned what was in there. So I sold that. And I mean, I, I took a big hit. You know, I, I lost a lot of money on it, but I still was able to to make some of it. So that's what I, I'm, that money that I have right now, I, I don't know what to do with it because I don't want to use it for my personal life. Cause what I end up doing was going and, and work. So I'm working. That's whenever I was talking to you the other day, I was working. Um, whenever you last. Yeah. Thursday. Yeah. You're, you're in the store. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it was, was great. The store. <laughs> and I got in the <laughs> That was great. I love it. Yeah, I got in trouble too, but I was like, it was an emergency. Yeah. But, you know, that's what I end up doing, having to work for someone, which is hard. I mean, after you've been on your own for so long, it, it's mm. hard. So right now I'm like, okay, what do I do? You know, like I'm, I'm stuck. I'm lacking discipline. I'm lacking focus because I have so many things going on. Um, 
just a lot of personal stuff and then, you know, business stuff. Like my hus- my husband walked out um, in April. So, you wow. know, like it's like one thing after the other. I came home one day and he was gone. We've been having problems, you know, so this was coming. But it's like everything here and at the same time. I'm like, what do I do? You know, so right now I'm working for this place. I'm still I'm doing retail and I'm like um, manager's assistant, but it's not something that I want to do. Mm-hmm. So my thing is, um, how can I get back into being disciplined? I mean, I've always been disciplined, but right now I'm like, I don't know what's happening. You know, so that's where I'm stuck. Okay, so you, so you start with, you know, you take a deep breath and you realize, hey, this is a, this is a pretty, you've, you've had some pretty uh, life-altering things that have happened. And don't expect to be perfect while it's happening. You know, like when I broke my neck uh, on my tour last year, I was super frustrated too that I couldn't do, like I have a concussion, right? I I had a concussion, broke my neck in two spots and I'm in the hospital and I had to cancel my event because that was that night. And then I told the doctor, okay, can we, can we just have everybody who was going to come to the event come to my hotel and can I do something there? He's like, no, you have a concussion. Like you can't do this. <laughs> right. And, and so it was like slowing down was really hard. Um, I remember that the first night I was able to go home, I couldn't, I had to go to the bathroom at, you know, three or four in the morning or something. And I, and I pushed myself up and, and I was starting to get dizzy and I was worried that I was going to pass out, which isn't good when you've just broken your neck, right? Like fall on the floor. And so I had to wake up my wife to help me go to the bathroom. And they mean, that may not seem like a big deal, but I like independence. You know, I like doing my own thing and I couldn't do something as simple as go to the bathroom by myself. Mm-hmm. And so it, it's okay that it's, it, you have to go through some periods of slowness when this stuff happens. You know, when I, I w- I'm divorced, when I was divorced, I don't know, eight or nine years ago, um, I, I wrote to everybody who was in my circle, my customers, my friends, my, my employees, everybody on my team. And I said, hey, um, here's what happened. I'm not mentally where I need to be right now. I'm not as sharp as I used to be. I'm, I'm probably going to drop a few balls. Like it's not going to be as normal Evan, but I'm going to get back to it. So just letting you know this is what's going on. And, and it wasn't a total disaster. But just letting people know, like, it's, it's, it's not even them. It's, it's for you to understand that it's okay that it's going to slow down right now. That this is not, you're not going to be in retail forever. Like, mm-hmm. in a couple of years, you're not going to be working at a retail store, right? And, and you deserve to have, uh, you know, a, a, a husband in your life who supports you and believes in you and encourages you. And it's a blessing that he's gone. Because imagine another four years of being with him and just lost opportunity cost. So you, you will be in a different spot. So don't, I wouldn't put so much pressure on yourself right now. And I'm the go, go, go consistency guy. Right. But there, there are moments where you have to be more gentle on yourself and not expect to be perfect on your schedule or perfect in your discipline. Um, but know that you will be in a different spot. So it's now creating hope for a better future. So like, where do you, where do you want to be? What do you want to be doing again? Like when COVID's done, what do you want to be doing? Back to the bridal store or something else? So I have a plan. Um, I'm like, I'm, you know, I know where I want to go. Like when I turn, my goal is when I turn 50 years old, I want to have a business where I just check up on it. You know, I don't want to be involved in all this starting up and going back and forth, managing the business. I want to be able to, just check up on it. You know, like I tell my, my kids, well, they're all grown up, but you know, I just want to come by there and pick up the check and leave, you know, just, just, as, um, but what I want to do is I want to buy some small houses and rent them out to people with low income because I've struggled so much while raising my kids, you know, renting places was a struggle always, or just buying a house was a struggle. So I want to buy small houses, nothing big, you know, just like a single home and rent them out to people with low income. And then like, I'm looking at two or three years 
start my bridal and quinceanera store again. So those are the the two things that I want to get back on, you know, but I just don't know if it's possible, you know, like the way, I guess the way I'm feeling right now is just, it's, it's not helping me think, but that's really what I want to do. You know, I want to start my store again in like two to three years, but come back like with a bigger store. Cause right now it was, it was small. It wasn't really small, but it wasn't too big. It was like a medium size. Well, one, I want to come back and make a big store, but at the same time, you know, I want to be able to buy those houses and just rent them out. Why, why do you believe that you can't start a bridal store again? You've already done it. You've had some success doing it. Why do you believe you can't start it up again? Uh, be- I'm thinking that maybe two or three years from now, it's not going to be, um, maybe it's not going to be a big demand like it is right now. Because in this area, we don't have a quinceanera. We have bridal shops, but they're more, I guess my, the people that I was selling to it was more uh, Latin America, mm-hmm. you know, people. So it was more of a quinceanera more than, in, more than bridal. Sure. If I, I don't know, if, I don't want to sound so confusing, but it no, was it more his, Hispanic base. You know, and that's what I'm saying. Like maybe in three years from now, it's not going to be such a big demand as it was now. Why? Um, because like now what I'm seeing is more people are finding places or like just ordering online. And I don't know. I'm just, I guess I'm just afraid that it's not going to be a big demand. I know how to do it. I mean, I have the providers. I have a list, you know, cause I'm very, um, I'm very organized when it comes to things like that. So I have all these providers that I know I can go back to and, and purchase from. But I'm, I guess I'm just afraid that it's not going to be a big, a big demand. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, but, but this is the thing that you have to, this is what you have to start getting excited by to figure out your way through it because people can't always buy online and that's fine. But if they're buying a wedding dress online, it's probably not your, your target audience anyway. Mm-hmm. people are coming to you for the extra service. They're coming to you for the expert knowledge. They're coming to you for help because they don't know how to do it. You're, you're going to tell them all the things that they need to get done that they maybe not, they didn't even think about before because you've been through it however many times. And for everybody, it's probably their first time. And so that's mm-hmm. where people lean on an expert to get advice and knowledge. So uh, the, the only problem right now is you don't believe in that bigger future yet, which yeah. is, which is what we have to overcome because especially the beginning of a business when you can target people who have money or who are willing to pay money, it's just so much easier than targeting people who don't. So when you're at somebody's wedding, people spend stupid money on weddings, you know, right? <laughs> yes. <Like> people, <laughs> people spend a lot of money on a lot of things. It's crazy, right? It's like they want their dream wedding and they want it to be perfect. And, and that's a great <laughs> business to be in. Um, it's, it's much better than your other idea. Like the, 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 the low income homes is a noble idea, but it's a hard first business to do because you're, t- you're targeting people who don't have money. Mm-hmm. And so finding the, the rental property that will make you enough, finding the right quality tenants, having people pay you on time when they don't have any money, like it's going to be really hard to make money in that business. Not that you can't. It's a, it's a noble ambition, but as a first business, I would love to see you make some money again, right? So then you can invest into other causes, right? Um, you have to start thinking about what a, what a good plan for your, for your wedding shop is going to be. And so I would start talking to all my, all my suppliers, ask them how they're doing, see what mm-hmm. they're up to. Um, I'd be sticking around in the community. Like, how did you get most of your clients before? Word of mouth? Yeah. See, what happened was I had a quinceanera um, in 2015. My daughter turned 15. So it was so hard for me to find her dress, like the perfect dress, you know, and just to find everything that I wanted because there was one store in the area and they were so basic, you know, and I wanted something different. So I did everything myself. Never in my life have, have I done anything like that. So I did it myself and people loved it. And they were always asking me, like different people were asking me, where, where did you get it from? You know, like, 
or where did you buy the centerpieces? And I created everything. Yeah. So that's what started my business. Is nobody calling you now for help? Yeah. And so what are you doing with them? They're calling you and saying, hey, I need a dress or I need, uh, what's happening right now? Right now, I tell them, I'm sorry, I'm closed. Um, And I refer them over to the lady that bought my stuff. Do you have a non-compete? Um, no. So why not say, hey, I'll make, I'll make your dress? Well, the dresses, what I was doing is, the dresses, I was buying them and reselling. Okay. So in order for me to do that, I would have to invest more money. It's not... But what's, the, what's the order time on a dress to get it in? Three months. Three months. That's yeah. a long time. Yeah. Well, what's it like? This is the time to be creative. What can you do? You've got you've got customers coming. Like you've got you've got the hard part. You got people who are calling you and saying, "Hey, how do I do this?" Instead of just mm-hmm. passing them on to the person about your store, what can, what can you do to help them? Like, what did you do at the beginning? You didn't have so much inventory and everything. Well, see this. No, this is what happened because at the beginning, I had what I was doing was decorating venues. Because that's I did that for my daughter too, and yeah. people wanted me to do what I did for my daughter to do it for them because it was so different. Mm-hmm. So whenever I sold that business, I invested that money, and I bought a bunch of merchandise. And then you started selling that. And then I started selling that instead of me putting the work in, I was just buying and reselling. Got it. So, so who can you connect with that can make these dresses? faster or you can sell on commission i could probably sell on commission um but you see if, even and that's what i guess that's why i just decided to sell what i had because it was just becoming so hard for me because i didn't in order for me to buy like the big companies that sell the dresses mm-hmm. i have to buy like three thousand dollars worth of dresses, which is like three dresses, four dresses, because those dresses are really expensive. But in order for me to sell the dress, then I have to sell the bouquets. Um, it's just a lot of stuff that comes with it. And people that buy your dresses, they want you to buy, to sell them everything, like the bouquets, the tiaras, you know, just like the whole, I guess the whole packages. And that's where I was making my money because I was selling the whole packages. But I was buying from different suppliers. But the other stuff is fast. Flowers are like flowers. You're not, are you doing the flowers in house yourself? No, you work with a flower shop. Well, it was more of, um, I wasn't doing any real flowers. I was doing fake flowers. (laughs) Okay, great. So, but how long, what's the lead time on getting the flowers together? Um, it depends on what the person wants. Sometimes two weeks, three weeks. So it's not, yeah, it's faster. Like, yeah. is anything as long as the wedding dress? I guess it's not a wedding dress. If we're talking about 15-year-old girls, right? It's just like a, uh, a, it's, like a special party when you turn 15. It's a big deal. It's a big deal. Okay, I spent $32,000 on my daughter. She is, so no, you deal. did not. <laughs> yes. No. No. Yes. What? Yes. Wow. Uh, <laughs> See, this is the business you need to be in. I love it. I love it. And I love talking $32, to teenagers. $32,000 yes. when she turned 15. <laughs> yes. <laughs> is this only for girls or boys too girls just girls. it's just for girls when yeah. girls turn 15 it's a big deal okay yeah. wow yeah <laughs> okay so so but the dress takes a lot of time great but the other stuff is just a matter of weeks yeah yeah so so then you could do all the other stuff easily you could do all the other stuff Mm-hmm. And see, and that's how I started because when I first started, I was doing everything from my house. When I got the permits, I got them at my house. So it was like a home-based business. But then I just needed so much inventory that I had to go out and rent a place. You know, and that's what I'm thinking. Okay, so what if right now I focus on taking a lot of courses towards um, e-commerce, you know, um, knowing how to use Instagram. Cause this is the first time I'm using Instagram now that I'm, you know, in your, yeah, in your group. So just taking this time to train myself to use YouTube channel to do um, Facebook lives, um, you know, maybe just take like a whole year and just learn how to do this other stuff and then come back, 
You know what I mean? Like save this money. Yeah, I don't think you need to though. Like I think you can start right now. Like it's not that you you shouldn't do Instagram or YouTube or be able to blow this up. And I think you could even do it not just for your own little, not just for your own town, not just for North Carolina, but you could do Mm -hmm. it for America, you know, and learning how can I market myself in in Florida, right? Or or in Texas or in, right? But even for now, you have an opportunity. Like I want you to be able to focus on this so you don't have to have your job anymore. Like yeah. you, you could make enough just from your current clients and, and word of mouth power right now. Mm-hmm. You're just too attached to like the store. People are still going to do their parties. They may not be $32,000 parties, 42,000. How much did you spend again? 32. 32. <laughs> oh my God. I'm going to have nightmares over this. <laughs> <laughs> if you have Justin Bieber come sing at your event or something or what? I like, he would do that. He, he charged more. Um, Anyway, like people are still doing their parties. They may not be as big. They may not be as expensive. They may not be as, uh, you know, they may not be having 100 people come over or whatever with, with COVID. But they're still, it's obviously an important tradition. And people are still doing it. Just like people are still mm-hmm. having weddings. And brides still want their wedding dress. And they still want their bouquets. And they still want their invitations and all of this stuff, right? Mm-hmm. So maybe maybe instead of a $32,000 party, it's a $15,000 party or whatever. But there's still there's still room in there for you to make money. There doesn't have to be a store for people to go to. The the thing that you win off of was never actually your store. It's your heart. Like you, you, you care about these parties. You care about these girls. You care about these families in a way that probably the person who took over your store doesn't care as much about them. It's not that they don't care, but it's a business as opposed to something that is like deep in their heart. Like whenever you start talking about it, you see your energy come alive and you're happy and smiling. So I'll be looking right away. How can I make enough money from that business so that I don't have to be at that job? And it may not be the same size business as you had before yet. Once we get through COVID and all this and great, it can, it can build up, but you also don't need it to be as big because you don't have overhead. You don't have a store to have to go to and worry about. And Mm -hmm. you just have to be a little more resourceful in that. You can take pictures of the things, you know, in your home instead of them coming to, to visit your home. Maybe you order three dresses that are kind of the most common dress that that is easier to sell compared to like mm-hmm. this crazy unique dress. that's going to be really hard to sell. And you still use all your suppliers because they probably still love you. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be happy to, could- and, and they're probably stuck with struggling business too. And if you're saying, Hey, I've got an opportunity for you. Maybe they give you a better rate or maybe they give you faster timelines because they want to keep their business afloat too. Mm -hmm. If, if I'm you, I'm, I'm open for business. I'm at home and I'm open for business and I can't do everything that I did before, but I'm, but I still got the heart and I still want to make sure that your daughter has the greatest event of all time. And I'm the person who's going to help you do that. And here's how it can help. Okay. The only thing missing is just a lack of belief that that path is possible. So I will, you know, I will think about it because I, I really don't want to give up on it. You know, it's, it's something that I, I love to do. And then I have another quinceanera coming up in two years. I have one more daughter. <laughs> and you need, <laughs> so, you need, you need $52,000 now for her. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> this is amazing. Um no, you, 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 you uh, that the next person that calls you that says, Hey, how do I, Esmeralda, I need a dress. Who should I go to me? I'll help you. Okay. The next people who, who call you, you saying, I'll help you. And then, yeah. and then you put the word out back to the, like, how are you communicating with people? Just email or in a Facebook group or just phone calls or texts or Facebook? What, like, how are you talking to people? Uh, phone calls and Facebook. I used to have a, a Facebook page, but I wasn't so good with it. You know, I wasn't good at uploading my pictures, but it was. That's you know, fine. It was no, there. that's fine. It's word of mouth. Like this is a word of mouth business. You've won because, because you have a big heart to do this. You're lovable. People know that you're going to do a good job and you've, you've built a reputation for, for mm-hmm. delivering. Right. So yeah. it's, it's like today I would contact, look at the past 30 people who bought from you and, and call them and tell them that you're, you don't want to close down the business and that you're open for business from home because okay. the way it just spreads that they know somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody 
and and it's, they're gonna your phone's gonna ring. Okay. And I have one, like I have one quinceanera that they had to postpone, like they had to postpone their party till next year. So they want me to do it. They want me to do it. So they're, they're waiting for, you know, they gave me a time, but they want me to do it. Of course. So. And, and you're going to say, yes, I'm going to do this, not go yeah. to this person who bought my store. Yeah. So, so yeah. It's- how, how many do you need to do to not... Like how many did you do in a month to not work that job anymore? Two. Two a month? Two. <laughs> oh my just God. Two. Esmeralda, yes. come on. This, yeah. this is what you need to do. Just two. I mean, it's, it's a really good business. And I guess that's what drove me to do it because it's, I get to make money. I get to talk to teenagers, which I love doing, you know, and I, I, I get to just, come up with new ideas because everybody wants something different. Yeah. And, and so it was like, everything was it's there fun. for me. And how many hours a week are you working at this place? 40, 40 hours a week. Like you have to, <laughs> you, you could get those two today. You could put out, if you, if you called 30 to 50 people today, and just said, hey, you know what? I'm back in business. I don't have my store. I'm doing it from home. Mm-hmm. I don't have all the resources that I did before. But I will care more for your daughter and your event than anybody else in this city. And if you know somebody or you're doing it, just keep me in mind. You'll get two today. You just have to call 50 people. Yeah. And then you don't have to go work 40 hours at a job that it's not that they're bad, that the company's bad, <laughs> but like you just, you know, you can do so much more and you don't have to wait three years for that to happen and do real estate or anything on the side until you get there. Like you could make that happen today. I will. What's, what's, the, what's the resistance to calling up all the people who've worked with you, who've hired you in the past? Because people know people and they have cousins and nieces and, you know, second daughters and all this other stuff, right? What's the hesitation to just calling 50 people today who already know you in the community and saying, I'm open for business. If you know anybody, I'm doing it from home right now. I guess I'm just kind of, um, I guess I was just depressed because April came and I started getting phone calls because what happens with these parties is that they plan ahead, like a year ahead or six Mm -hmm. months ahead, just because it takes so long Mm -hmm. for everything, for the whole planning. And I started getting calls. Look, we need to cancel. I need a refund. Um, Just one thing after the other. And with some people, I had to give them a refund because I knew it wasn't their fault. You know, so I'm I'm here and I'm making money and I have to give money out. And I guess it was just one thing after the other, you know, my personal life and then my business. And I just got depressed and I was like, this is not me. You know, so I told myself I, I can't keep doing this. Yeah. And I started working. That's the reason why I started working, because I was like, I can't be at home just feeling depressed. And now I'm like, I mean, do I really I, I don't know. Like, I just feel like I'm not that same person, you know, that I could do anything. No, no, no. You are. You're, you're not this person. You are that person. You're that person. <laughs> <laughs> you're not this person. <laughs> this is who you're not. But it's just, it, it's, it's, listen, a lot of people have been punched in the face because of COVID and everything else that's happened right now. A lot of, a lot of people. And, and that is part of business. You know, it's, stuff is going to happen. This is obviously a crazy time totally outside your control. Nobody predicted that this was coming. Um, and it's like, just imagine where you want to be in three years. That's, that's possible. You can have a bigger store than you had before. And people still like, this is part of the culture and the heritage and people are still going to have like, unless people stop having daughters or something, you know, like <laughs> it, there's always going to be a business for you. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> And, and I think with your heart and care and, and yes, learning about Instagram and YouTube might help you turn this into a national thing where now you're getting orders from 
from Miami and getting orders from, mm -hmm. from Dallas, right? Like you can order from across America and work with people. But you could easily get back to a place where you can support yourself, not have to have that job, get your two, two clients a month just by putting the word out to the 50 people. And, and if they say, hey, we're still, we'll, uh, we're still not ready, like October next year, we'll do it. Or June next year. Okay, no problem. I'm, whenever you're ready, I'm here. And if you want to do it when your daughter is 16 years old, I'm, I'm ready for that too. <laughs> right? Yeah. It's a little bit of um, humbleness, you know, to, to, it feels like a failure going backwards. And it's, but, but look at what's happened instead. You've gone and got a job at a retail store instead. Right. I would, I would call it like, I think you can get your 50, your two clients today by calling up to 50 people. And again, they may not be as profitable and you don't have your store and all that stuff, but you can still get that business today and you can start to, this is all, all this is, is just how, how long do we want to stay in the hole? Because mm -hmm. you got hit hard, like a lot of, you know, the world did and you're in the hole right now, but you can get out a lot faster than most people. You can get out just how long do you want to stay here before you get out. And then your head is like, okay, I'm going to wait three years here and then do real estate and then build my store bigger. Whereas like that could happen way faster if you wanted to. And it's just giving yourself permission to, to, to do it and call the clients. And it's okay that you took this little, uh, I won't call it a pity party, but like the little time to reflect and, and don't judge yourself too hard for not being perfect and not, um, not being on schedule and sticking to your routine and being like the, the ambitious person that you used to be. That's who you actually are. This is just a, a slow period. <laughs> like it's a, a small setback, which happens, right? This isn't just straight up, right? It's a lot of this. So you're at a down, just, you can control how low you stay down here. And, you know, I desperately want you just to call 50 people today. I We're will. talking tomorrow, <laughs> right? You're on my, you're on Movie Makers tomorrow. Well, I got to work, so I'm going to be listening to you. You're listening. <laughs> you say, Esmeralda, did we do our 50? Did we get our 50? Or maybe you're not working tomorrow because you just got two deals from the 50 calls that you made today. Possibly. <laughs> Hopefully. And listen, even if you don't get the, even if you don't get the two sales right now, uh, just saying that you're back in it and you want to help people from your home, uh, we'll get you a deal. We'll get you to two deals next month. Like if you don't get it today, you'll get it next month. And that, that, that allows you to have a, a window for your job so that it's not 40 hours working for somebody else doing work that you hate for years. It's mm -hmm. for the next couple of weeks. Cause you still got to make money. You still got to get paid to mortgage, all that stuff. Um, but just letting people know that you're back, you will get deals. And it's just accepting smaller deals and building up. It would be like going back whenever I first started. You know, I was just doing them because people were asking me to do them for them, not because I, I wasn't planning on, on starting a business. You yeah. know, I was just first I started doing it for free with yeah. friends and family. And then it became a business. So. And you're a lot smarter than you were then and you have a lot more connections than you did than you, than you did back then yeah. and, and you know how to solve problems way faster than you did back then so you can rebuild like if my youtube channel went to zero i could rebuild a lot faster than the 11 years it took me to get here mm -hmm. so same thing with you like even if you're starting you're not actually starting from scratch it's not like you're moving to a brand new city and have no idea what you're doing like you already have connections and suppliers and people who love you and know you and want to work with you you, you can rebuild it way, way, way faster, but it's not going to happen if you don't make the calls and it's not going to happen if you are staying at this job that you don't like. True. That's true. Let's go, Esmeralda. Come on. 50 <laughs> calls. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Make the calls. You just got to make the calls. Will do. All right. <laughs> All we'll right. talk to you tomorrow, Esmeralda. All right. <laughs> I'm Thank gonna you. I'm going to check in and see how you're doing. <laughs> All right. Okay. Thank you. To see me coach another entrepreneur one on one, check the video right there next to me. I think you'll love it. Continue to believe, and I'll see you there.
promo tip, which I got from uh, Tony Robbins that can help you. Whenever you're talking about the book, you hold it up and it's great that you have it as a prop, right? And you got it in the background too. You never say this book or my book. You say the name of the book so people remember the book.